welcome to Chairman of the Board. My name is Dan Honeyball and today we're going to be reviewing Betrayal at House on the Hill. Now this is a two to six player kind of exploration adventure game set in a haunted house. Now this game has a bit of a twist because basically sometime during the game one of the players will be revealed as a traitor and then depending on this book here of narratives they'll basically determine what kind of scenario plays out and what is happening in this haunted house so let's get into the review tell you about the things that we were laughing okay so the coolest thing about house on the hill is the fact that there are so many different scenarios that can play out this game actually comes with 50 different narratives which are included in this traitor's tome now all these narratives kind of have their own obviously their own story but they also have their own set of rules, meaning you're going to get a slightly different experience each time you play it. And these stories can include kind of classic horror themes such as Count Dracula, uh, Frankenstein, they can even be like invasions of aliens or dragons and giant snakes. So there's kind of a lot of variation that can, uh, that can play out in front of you. And that adds a lot to the, uh, the anticipation of what's going to happen in this house. The trail also has some pretty cool thematics especially the ones that play off those old horror cliches. As the game progresses and players are um, exploring this haunted house one room at a time, some pretty cool things can happen. They can be maybe uh, finding certain weapons or objects or experiencing things that can affect your character's stats for, throughout the rest of the game. And I like that. And these things can include things such as maybe uh, finding a room for the creepy crawlies or spiders or even finding secret passages that take you from one side of the house to another. They can even be maybe um, picking up certain people or creepy little girls or madmen which also affect your stats through the rest of the game. So I like it in that respect. Now something I don't like about Betrayal <clears throat> is the fact that before the traitor is revealed, players kind of wander around this haunted house aimlessly. There's no rhyme or reason behind any of the decisions taken. It doesn't really matter where you go because all the room tiles are drawn at random. You kind of feel more of a passenger than a player because you're kind of just going through, through the motions for no reason and there's no strategy involved at all. When that traitor is finally revealed, there seems to be this real break in the flow of the game as the traitor and the other players are forced to kind of uh, absorb their rules as quick as possible so that the game isn't uh, discombobulated too much. And this really creates this atmosphere of confusion as no one really knows what's going on. Yeah, the rules are simple, but the fact that you don't want to kind of break the flow too much, it just, it just doesn't sit well. Also, the rules tend to be very underwhelming and kind of undynamic and uncreative they generally kind of end very abruptly and are just uninspiring. I mean, these rules kind of, well, to be honest, almost always are dictated simply by dice rolling. Um, basically, the, the player who gets the highest rolls wins, no matter what kind of scenario there is. Yes, some are better than others, some are more interesting than, than others, but generally, it's just a roll-off. It doesn't matter what the uh, flavor text is, because you're essentially playing the kind of same thing each time, just with a different, some different narrative pasted to it. And um, I think after you've played this a few times, this really presents itself. And finally, some of these components are pretty poor, to be honest. They're not of the best quality. Uh, take these uh, character tiles, for example. Um, these little plastic um, clips that dictate your character stats they're generally very loose, just fall off. You lose control of, or you lose, um, you lose track of your stats as the game progresses because they just don't stay where they're supposed to. The miniatures are okay, but not great. The tiles, again, they're okay, but they're again, they're just they're quite bland. There's there's nothing really there to uh, capture the capture the imagination. Okay, so in conclusion. Betrayal is really not a game for me. The fact that it sells itself as a strategy game is absolutely crazy. There is next to no strategy, 
strategy that goes into this at all, in my opinion. You kind of just wander around aimlessly and feel more of a passenger than anything. Um, some of the components are pretty disappointing. Yes, some of the thematics are quite decent, but the rules are just so dated and they're so clunky and uninspiring that any kind of attempt to make the thematic kind of falls flat because it just isn't fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for my criteria breakdown of Betrayal at House on the Hill. If you've liked this video, please uh, hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. This has been Chairman of the Board. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.